You know what time it is Time to hang hey, out with Mr. Cool We're Mr. Kuba We're Mr. Kuba We're Mr. Kuba Get the latest cool From Mr. Kuba From Mr. Kuba From Mr. Kuba Hey, we're Mr. Kuba We're Mr. Kuba We're Mr. Kuba We're Mr. Kuba Get the latest cool From Mr. Kuba From Mr. Kuba Welcome to the Bit Scoop with Coop. I'm your host, Coop. Season nine is almost over. One more episode after this, so we'll be journeying into season 10. Big shout outs to everyone that's been on the website, thebigscoopwithcoop.com, where you can catch episodes from season one all the way up to now. Big shout outs to everybody that's on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash thebigscoopwithcoop. Also, big shout outs is watching on Instagram. IGTV, baby, at Big Scoop with Coop. And also, big shout out to everybody that's went to YouTube. Make sure you go to YouTube.com. Look for the Big Scoop with Coop. Click like and subscribe. Catch all full episodes from season one all the way up to now. All right, people, enough about me. Today's guest, you have seen him on Fuller House. He is actually by, known by the name Jackson Fuller on Fuller House. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Campion. Michael has got a great career that's going on. Um, you're going to hear all about that. At the age of 13, he actually received his role as Jackson Fuller on Fuller House. We're going to kick it with um, Michael. We're going to see what's going on with him. We're going to hear about his career. We're going to hear about backstage of Fuller House. We're going to hear about the show Fuller House and more. All right, people. Let's go on and check out the show. Let's kick back, relax, and I hope you enjoy. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Of course, of course. How's your day so far? And my day has been very productive. I've uh, I've gotten a lot done. I um, just have a lot of uh, scripts and stuff I have to learn, uh, mainly for commercial auditions. And yeah, it's been a good day. Good day. That's what I'm talking about. It sounds like it's a very busy day also. A uh, busy grips. day. Yes. Yeah. How about yourself? What's going on? Oh, man, I'm in North Carolina. So, you know, everything is going good. Um, had a busy day also running around everywhere trying to get stuff done. And looking forward for the show today. Um, one more episode of season nine after you, and then it'll be season 10 of the show coming up. So big things wow. are going on. And I'm just wanting to take, I want to thank you personally for coming on the show. Um, and I just want to tell you right now, congratulations on everything you have done. And your career, once again, is nowhere close to being over. You're doing big things, continue to do big things. Oh, thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Yeah. And yeah. Definitely uh, going out there, trying to do my stuff. You seem like uh, got the same energy. That's great. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Now, yeah. Michael, for a lot of people, they've seen you, like I said, on Fuller House. You've been doing your thing. But let's rewind it back some before Fuller House. Now, when did you first realize that you wanted to become an actor? Oh, man. Um, a long time ago. I Well, long, long time ago. I was five years old. I, I remember, um, you know, I, tr I tried a few different things, um, like, sports and skating and stuff and all of a sudden I out of like the weirdest coincidence my mom took me and my sister to go take Christmas card pictures with um one of her friends who's a photographer and they the the, the lady her name was Tina she said wow your son is very photogenic would you mind if I sent a picture of him to um to my friend and that friend just so happened to be the head of uh Wilhelmina modeling which is a pretty big modeling company in Miami I didn't know I mean I was five and then they wanted to see me and they were like hey he should get some uh experience doing like community theater so I started doing that and all of a sudden just I loved it I mean I every bit of like the person I was I was super extroverted little kid it just all connected and ever since then I've, I've been doing it so wow and you know what? I tell a lot of people this. If you have a love for it at a young age and it's a true love for it, you will continue to do it because it will be implanted into your heart and in your body and your son, your soul. So as we yeah. see, it's happened for you. Look at you now doing big things, very big things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, also, we heard about the community theater. You know, you started off, um, did a little modeling, we took pictures for it and everything. Um, what type of hurdles did you go through? Uh, from a young age of five all the way up to now to get you to where you are in your career? 
Oh man, what hurdles did I go through? Um, you know, it's interesting in the very beginning when I was, when I was little, I just loved it so much that even the, you know, some people would look at hurdles like, oh, I didn't get the job, you know, and then, oh, there's a lot of failure. But for me from like five to, I mean, sometimes even now I just looked at the audition as the job. Like I just had fun doing the audition. And even if I didn't get the job, you know, I would, I would feel good, you know, that I did a good job and it was just fun performing for people. So that's typically how, you know, a lot of people go to the industry and they go, man, there's so much failure and there's so much hardship. You know, you have to face a lot of that, but yeah, I mean, you, you, you don't get the job, but most of the time, like you got to go through a lot of auditions, but at the same time, I feel like it's such a privilege to just do, like, I would do this for free. You know, I do love it that much. And, um, so the thing, uh, the point is, is that a lot of the hurdles that people normally say about acting, I typically haven't had the, the ones that I feel like were the most impactful was balancing like my normal life with being on the show, because it took a lot out of, um, it took a lot out of me trying to do school at the same time and do the show. Cause you know, for most kids, like school is a full-time job and it was a full-time, yeah, it was a full-time job for me too. And plus being on set, it was pretty much, I was on set or I was at school and there was like no in between. So that got to be pretty hard, um, like more hard for the kids than it was obviously on the adults. So I'd say that was the biggest hurdle, not, not just with school, but you know, like trying to find my identity and also being in a fishbowl, like everyone sees what you do all the time. And that was challenging because, you know, when normal kids, when they grow up, you know, they make mistakes and, and they learn and they grow from it. But if I made a mistake or I was, I, I was in the public eye. So it, it definitely, um, that part was, was more impactful on me, but it, I, I feel like I had to grow up fast because of it. You know, I mean, you had to, I'm not gonna lie to you because when you're in a public eye and with um, the stature that you have today, a lot of people are looking at you from television, stream, online, social media, you're getting hit every which way. And you got to hold a certain demeanor, you know, because a lot of people in the industry, and you personally have probably seen this yourself in the industry, they get to a certain level and then they get to the point where they feel like they could do whatever they want. And then it goes downhill for them in their career. I'm not going to name any names, but I know you heard and seen some yourself. So that's good that you're keeping yourself where you are and keep yeah. your mentality. It well, thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I mean, honestly, I I feel like my parents had, had, a, had a big part in that because they were very, um, they never treated me any different uh, when I, you know, got to be in the public eye. They always told me to do my chores. They said, be humble. And I've, I've definitely uh, carried that through. And I, I preached that a lot is to be humble. You see so much like unself-awareness and it really is draining. Uh, but when you see someone who, you know, like is good with themselves and they just see it as a job and, and what they love to do, those are the people that you want to, you know, have in your life. So that's, that's so true. That's so yeah. true. Now, did you have any mentors to help you out on your way from the age of five all the way up to now? I had so many mentors. I had so many. Um, the, the, the like top four that I can think of, because everyone gave me, you know, bits of pieces and advice. And even the, the bad uh, ones, I learned a lot from like what not to do. But the ones that helped me out the most through my career was... Um, one person on Fuller House, his name was Joel Brooks. He uh, was like our acting coach, all of our acting coaches. And I, I bonded with him a lot. Um, another one was my very first acting teacher. Her name was Kia Riddick Taylor. And she got me so far, like connected me to the whole acting industry. Um, another one was when I was first doing musical theater, there's a, a man, his name was George Livings. He directed like Broadway shows. And um, he taught me a lot of like what it means to be professional and like, and like how to, you know, take direction. And so I, I feel like every, each one of them taught me so many things in a very specific field, a very specific, like, way of of being in the industry 
Yes, and just as a person too. Yeah, definitely. Of course, of course. And of course you got to give big shout outs to your parents too. And my parents. Oh my gosh. I can't even, yes. I don't, I, I don't even look at them as like mentors. I look at them as like the, the mentors of my life. Mm. I, I was just thinking of like, oh, people who've helped me along the way. No, no, no. Talk about people who have sacrificed pretty much everything for me. I mean, my, my mom came out here. She dropped everything and just and came out here and lived with me. And my dad, he had to be back home in Florida because he, he had two businesses, two jobs. And so man, like just looking at them as role models, I mean, seeing them, that's, that's really, really awesome to feel that, you know, to really see. Yes. Their love for me. Yeah. Big shout outs to all of the mentors that's been in Michael's life. I'm talking about from the parents to even outside of extended family that's inside the entertainment industry. Thank you for what you've done for Michael. You've done big things for him. Continue to help this guy out because sky's the limit for Michael. Definitely the sky's the limit for him. Now, Michael, let, let's talk about where you got everybody going crazy right now. Fuller House. I mean, we, we know. Well, OK, before I even go there. Ladies and gentlemen worldwide, if you don't know, Fuller House is the reboot, reboot of Full House. And I think 98% of America knows that already. But you all kept that 90s feel in this show that brought it out with a new twist and a new gang. And I love it. Now, how excited were you when you found out that you got the role of um, Jackson Fuller on Fuller House? I was... Oh my gosh. How did I even, it was just a whirlwind of emotions. Like I remember watching full house as a kid, like they'd have it on at like Nick at night and, and I'd watch, yeah, I would watch it with my mom. And, um, that was along with like George Lopez and friends, like they were all on there. So I got cultured on the, on the nineties and eighties sitcoms. It was cool. And then I had a very long audition process, which, uh, took me eventually out to California for my last audition and in the room they told me right then and there that I got the job and I just started crying like I I was I was on the floor I mean actually it was also the week of my 13th birthday so whoa yeah crazy right like literally a few days away I just had my my birthday on set so it was a a very big birthday present to me and honestly I felt like my entire life just was turned on its head like it was hard to even process stuff like I got the script and then I met all the cast and then I cut my hair and then I was immediately filming like a day or two later. So it was hard to just like process all of it all at once. I mean, the main feeling was excitement and like overjoyed with, you know, this opportunity uh, because I really felt like I I hit the jackpot with, you know, what happened. Uh, Yes, you did. Forget 16. You had sweet 13. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) I mean, that is crazy. But I got to know though, how does a 13 year old intake all of that? I mean, you have a life changing event within 13 years of your life to be yeah. on this show. Now at the time, nobody knew how many seasons Fuller House was really going to go. Yeah. And you guys are still at it. You got a new season coming up soon, don't you? No, no, we just had uh, season five. That was, yeah, that was the ending. That, whoa, five was the ending? Yeah, five, five is the end. Five is the end. No. Yeah. Hey, I'm I'm rooting for a, a Fuller House uh, Christmas movie. That's <laughs> that's hopefully what's next. Now I, I'm I'm going to admit I am a few episodes behind on season five. I'm midway through. Okay. My daughter, she's on it and she's finished it, and she's like, Dad, let me tell you, no, don't tell me nothing. I haven't seen the rest of it yet. Let me finish watching it. Gotta watch the rest. She's a big fan. Yes, I mean, very big fan of it. But I did not know five was the finale. I five really didn't. That's that's crazy. It's so, a great ending. Yeah, you'll love it. It's good. I, I will definitely have to check it out. So, how was the environment when the cameras are off with the cast? Full the, yeah, that was one of the biggest things that I. I was so happy to see that every single person treated each other like family. And, you know, for the past 30 years, they've been, you know, they, they grew up on the show and they've been together ever since. And you really feel that like when you're offset and you're just talking to them and like, they're totally normal people. I mean, I remember the very first time that I like was talking to them, I was like, Oh my gosh, they're larger than life. This like big, this huge thing. And then, they really accepted the the new kids into 
the show. And so it was the craziest thing because you don't hear that all too often that like people actually genuinely love each other on set. It's like, yeah, it was fine. You know, or, or, you know, they just huddled up in the room and we didn't really talk, but no, it was like, it was, I, I, I consider them like my second family at this, at this point for real. And, and I'm going to, even though I could call real names, I'm not going to do it for everybody that's watching worldwide. Cause a lot of people know people by stage names. Yeah. So how was it being around Kimmy and DJ? How was it, man? That's a, <laughs> that's a pretty broad question. Um, I, I, like being around them just as, as people, well, the, I, and I think of them as Andrea and Candace. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the real names. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's the real yeah. names. Yeah. Um, um, I, again, it's, it's so interesting because it's like, oh, how do you like your family? I'm like, I love my family. I mean, they're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're awesome. You know, uh, I really feel like um, Kimmy, uh, Andrea, she is my, my, my aunt. She's like Aunt Kimmy to me. And I mean, I just like we'll go over to her house and like visit her son and like we'll just have you know times where we'll just go go off and do stuff together as as like family it's literally like hey do you want to come over for christmas like and and it's uh it's it's at that level i mean we we all get along so well i just just haven't seen them in a little bit because a the pandemic and and you know stuff has happened everyone's doing their thing so that's what i'm talking about yeah big shout out to candace andrew big shout out to the whole set now, I want to ask you another question real quick. I want to know myself, Michael. This is a little personal spoiler alert for me, even though I haven't watched all the shows. Yeah. Did Michelle come back? She never did. Never ah. did. I, I was so disappointed. I was, I mean, I actually met um, Mary Kate Nash. Mary Kate, yep. I, I, I did. I, um, at the creator of Full and Fuller House. Uh, uh, his name is Jeff Franklin. They were at his house and I got a chance to shake their hand, talk to them, meet them, but nothing, man. I mean, we, we I remember we tried so hard to get them on the show and we, <laughs> we even made jokes about them not being on the show. Like, point, like I remember at one point, everyone looked at the camera and like said a joke about it because everyone knew. Yeah, you remember that, I right? remember that. I remember yeah. that. Yep, yep, yep. So funny. Yeah. I thought that was gonna draw me in though. I really did. I thought that was it. I thought you all got them then when you did that. Didn't get them. Didn't get them. Yes. Yeah. Now, Michael, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about a little backstage stuff that um well backstage humor at Fuller House that I know about. Yeah. Um that a lot of people don't know about, and I want you to talk about this. Now, the prank war between you and Sony. You guys have been going back and forth with each other on set. Can you shed some light on that for everybody to know about it? What what is what started this whole prank war between you two? Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was that was a lot. <laughs> um I remember okay, so what started it? Essentially so um the the three kids, it was me, Sony and Elias. Elias play, plays Max, Sony uh plays Ramona on the show and um Sony and I, we had to do school, like I said, and we had this little school room at the top of the stage, like there was this elevated platform where we had all of our dressing rooms and then just just like big, what seemed to be like a storage closet, elongated storage closet, and we had computers in here and like a desk and our teacher, and Sony and I would be in the same room for hours at a time and we would just be doing school and whenever we got bored I mean at least when I got bored you know I started to I I feel like I definitely started this by like provoking her um I don't know I don't know exactly how it started but I just remember like I I brought in a Nerf gun from the 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 props department they had a Nerf gun that they were giving away and I remember I I would shoot Sony with it uh, occasionally and then I remember at some point she would like she like replaced my like chocolate milk with like soy sauce. And then it, all of a sudden it just started like, it just like, <laughs> I don't know what happened, but then I was like, no, I'm going to get you back to this. So, and I would like do stuff to her. She would do stuff to me. She like hid my computer at one point. And then, um, and then actually at the same time that, that this was going on, 
Andrea and uh, Jody, the one uh, um, Kimmy and and um, uh, uh, Stephanie, they had a prank war going on, and Andrea vlogged all of this. So, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I'm getting into like a small a small side story. But what what happened with them is there was this table that excess props would be left on for us to sign, and then would be given to the live audience at at, at some point um, during during the show. But there was this other table right next to it that looked exactly the same and it had other props. And Jody, just not knowing, she would sign props that were being used in the show. And then we'd be like, why is there Jody's signature on here? And then like, like she did that like five times. We're like, what is your problem? And then, and then at one point, um, uh, Jody uh, did this prank where she put a bunch of sticky notes of her signature on Andrea's uh, on Andrea's door. And then at one time that like the biggest one that's totally ended all of it is that Andrea bought a bunch of shirts with Jody's signature on it, gave it to all of the cast. <laughs> and, then, and then at one point, Jody was coming in to work. I'm like, okay, everyone get into the living room. And it was just all of us where she signed all of the cast. It was hilarious. And there's a giant video of it on YouTube. So they definitely outdid us with the pranks. It was just like petty pranks with me and Sony, but like there were pranks going on left and right in, in, in the Fuller House studio. So. <laughs> Jody, if you watching this girl, you took this to the next level. So now, funny. You, why you didn't take Michael up there with him? You should have did that. You should have hit Michael up with some of these pranks also. Oh, that's I would have been so in on it. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Now, um, Michael, far as it goes for Fuller House, um, like I said, everybody that have not seen it already, what's the best way for everybody to keep, um, catch up for season one to five for Fuller House? <laughs> Yeah, so all of the seasons are on Netflix. And uh, fun fact, you can actually change your profile picture to my face because I have a little option. There's like a Fuller House section. You can do my face or any of the other cast. So if you want to catch up and be cool, you can change your profile picture to me. So have you changed your profile picture to yourself? You know, I thought that I should. And then I was like, you know, what's even better if I get all of my friends to do that for me. So all of my friends, they all have my, I've, I've gone into the Netflix accounts and I've changed my face to it. So they now see me every time they log into Netflix. It's great. Everybody worldwide, make sure you go to Netflix, change your profile to Michael's face, do it. Everybody blow it up. <laughs> make sure you do it. Go to Netflix, That's watch better. season one through five. Don't do it right now because you're watching this interview after this interview. Season one through five, it's time to binge. Do it. Make sure you catch up. Catch up with me on this show. I want you to make sure you pass me for season five. But I guarantee you won't because I want to beat all of y'all. I will make sure I do that. Now, Michael, are there any other projects that you're working on that um, you'd like the world to know about? Any other projects I'm working on? Um, for right now, I am focusing a lot on... Uh, I'm actually going to... Uh, and acting school at the moment. So um, some of the projects that I've been working on, I can't really do that right now. I'm about to graduate, so that's gonna be oh. cool. But for now, I am, um, I'm also a magician at, a, oh. yeah, very cool. I'm also a magician at a place called uh, the Magic Castle here in Hollywood. And um, I perform there pretty much every weekend. And Magic Castle is a little hard to get into, um, but yeah, I have that going on. Um, I am, also, uh, I, I do a lot of magic all the time everywhere. So if anyone feels so inclined to hire me for their corporate event or whatnot to like do some magic, I, that's, that's what I got going on. That's what I'm talking about. Everybody, I don't care if it's parties. I don't care if it's a birthday party. I don't care if it's a convention. Hire Michael. Tell him Coop sent you. Get him on your show. Get him to do magic. He may say abracadabra. Here goes the whole cast of Fuller House. They may pull them all out of a hat. You don't know what this man going to do next. Make sure you keep up with him. Make sure you definitely do that. Um, now, as far as it goes for that, um, like I said, your projects, congratulations first. As far as it goes for about to graduate. That, that's big right there. Thank you for doing that because there's more doors about to open up for you. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, now, Far as it goes for social media, a lot of people is following you on social media, but the people that's not following you on social media, what is the best way for them to follow you? My main platform is Instagram. Uh, it's just Michael Campion. No spaces or anything. That's it's, uh, I'll probably be one of the first ones that pulls up. So Nice. Everybody, follow him on Instagram. You know what to do. You don't know what he's going to do next. That's one way to find out right there. 
Now, um, Michael, there's a lot of people in the world that wants to get to where you are at. Um, far as it goes for in the, in the, in the entertainment industry. Um, you started at 13. Well, you started at five. Age of 13, you hit this certain plateau for Fuller House. Now, what advice would you give any male or female that wants to become an actor or actress? Yeah, I get asked this question a lot. And I've attempted to answer it a bunch of times. Most of the time, it's a, it's a case-by-case situation where I need to know a few things about the person. The first one that I found, actually, let me back up a little bit. When I got into acting, I realized that the number one thing that I had going for me was that I would give up everything for it. And that that's what got me to the point where I feel like I'm at right now. And obviously I had a lot of luck there too. I mean, just like being at the right place at the right time and the right age for things. I mean, that had a lot to do with it. But the number one thing that I see with people who want to be actors is that they they give up really fast because it's, I mean, people do say that it's met with a lot of rejection. Um, and I, I don't like to look at it that way, like, like I said before. So I feel like what needs to change, at least for people who ask me these questions, is to really know what you're getting yourself into. And also, do you love it enough to like give up you know, time that you need to spend for it yourself? Like I remember I, like asking kids my age when I was younger, like, oh, you know, you're in acting. And then I'd see that they wouldn't want to do auditions because they had a sleepover that day, you know, or, or they, um, you know, they, they had other things that they wanted to do other than acting. And that's just not going to cut it because there's so many people who are more willing and more committed to doing it. And you just have to love it so much to give up, you know, it's not to say not to have a life. I mean, you obviously have a life, but it's just very demanding to be in the industry and um, for some people, it's it's difficult. I can understand the difficulty because I remember when I was little, mm-hmm. I'm pretty much doing, like if someone's starting from scratch, me as a kid, I got to a certain point with getting an agent and headshots and a manager and, and getting a few projects under my belt all when I was very little. So now at the point where like, I need to make money like for my, for my own self, you know, projects that come, I, I get auditions on the regular and I know that that's hard for some people. So getting to this point is what a lot of people want to do. And to get here, it's literally just consistency. If I had to give a real solid piece, three solid pieces of advice, it would be you have to love it 100%. Also, um, continue training because after, as soon as I got off of Fuller House, I took my acting career very seriously in terms of, you know, me getting better. And I, I went to a school, right? You know, if, if, if your uh, time allows for it, definitely consider training um, and consistency. That's it. With those, with those three, love it. Just keep piling through. I think that is the number one thing that's that's gonna make you be successful. As an I actor. like that. I like that. Now, Michael, in this industry, also, um, and stop me if I'm lying. It doesn't happen to everybody, but a lot of people, a hundred no's equals one yes in this industry. A lot of times, that's happened to a lot of people. Um, you probably know some people that got nose back to back to back to back and then they hit that final yes and it plateaued them also um and a lot of people have seen that happen to past actors and current actors so i want to tell everybody ladies and gentlemen worldwide i don't care if you're in the entertainment industry i don't care if you're a plumber it doesn't matter you don't give up just like mike said it's consistency continue to do what you do now also mike um can you name some television shows and movies that you actually appeared in besides Fuller House? Television shows, and movies. Um, so I, before Fuller House, I uh, was in two feature films. One was called um, Robo, actually three feature films. One was called Nova Road, Robo Dog, and uh, The Christmas Trade. And um, all of that was, was pre Fuller House. I couldn't really do any other projects when I was on Fuller House, because I, I was like, you know, in a contract. Um, but yeah, so up until the point where I was 13, 
I, I got those. I was also on a show called Red Ruby and um, other stuff that I've been in. I mean, I, I, was, in a, I was in a theater production here very recently. Um, it was a, called a Snow White Christmas, um, which was very cool. Yeah, it was uh, just like a little Christmas time event put on by the Lithgow family. And um, yeah, but as for right now, I'm just doing auditions, get plowing through, doing, doing the deal. Because like, I'm at that point where, you know, even me, well, not just even me, everyone, I'm also getting a hundred no's to a yes. You know, like even when you get to a point where, you know, you do get auditions consistently, that's where I'm at right now, you know, and, and that's perfectly okay. There's going to be ebbs and flows and I'm I just accept that. So. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, Mike. And that's the thing. See, you're even experiencing yourself. So that's what I'm talking about because you have a story to tell within the next five years or less that's going to run off or continue off of what you just said right here. Now, uh, Mike, this is the last segment of the show. It's called Take the Floor. Now, you have up to two minutes to say whatever you want. No questions asked. Michael Campion, take the floor. Oh, man. <laughs> what, do I, what do I want to say? What do I need to say? Um, if I had to say one thing to a bunch of people, let's see. Um, you know, one thing that I have realized in my own life and in my own career, a really quick question, actually, the, the, the audience that you have, this is mainly people who appreciate, you know, or are in the entertainment industry in some, some capacity. In some capacity, and also fans of it, big television movie fans also. So it's all around. Right, right. Cool. Um, one thing that I've, I've definitely noticed throughout all of my experience in life up to this point, uh, like, I was tell, like I was saying earlier, is that whatever field I'm in or whatever field anyone else is in, the main thing that I would love to just implant in the minds of people is being humble, not taking yourself too seriously, being able to have a level of self-awareness that I just see lacks oh so much in the entertainment industry. Um, a lot of ego, a lot of um, a lot of untruthfulness. You know, a lot of these people they they um, they tend to be weird, fake versions of themselves, and I just find it really refreshing when I find people who are completely okay with themselves and they know exactly what they want. And I surround myself with those people and I just, uh, what, do, what do I need to say about that though? I mean, I, I wish I could see more of that in the entertainment industry. And the more that people grow towards being self-aware and humble is what I feel like needs to change more than anything. <laughs> uh, at least with the people I'm, in with and surrounded with uh, so yeah that's that's what i want to say that's what's up now everybody that's in the industry that's fans in the industry or whatever industry you in just like mike said be yourself man it's too many fake people out here trying to duplicate or imitate another person just because you see someone make it to the top of their career you don't have to act like that person you don't have to be like that person be you let the world see who you are and I guarantee that's going to take you higher than what you think it's going to take you. That's what I'm talking about. Mike, I want to thank you again for coming on the show. And I'd love to have you back on in the future. Of course. Thank you so much. I'd love to be back. Oh, of course. Of course. All right, people, on the next episode of the Bit Scoop with Coop, my guest is, you know, I never announce my next guest. You have to stay tuned. Follow me. You got to find out who's coming up next. So make sure you stay tuned. And until the next time on the Bit Scoop with Coop. Thank you.